Hello and welcome back to the Sharks World, ladies and gentlemen. Today's video is on a topic recommended by a friend of the channel. You know who you are. So we all know sharks, right? Our resident higher order fish, guardians of the ocean, the greatest animal in the world, fight me. We also know they have many amazing abilities. They have two more senses than us. They have more muscle than elephants, gorillas, and tigers, and they're some of the smartest creatures on the planet. What could possibly make them cooler? How about the ability to regenerate? Yeah, eat your heart out, Wolverine. In this video, I'm going to be covering an article written by Chelsea Black at the University of Miami going over this very topic. As always in my videos, I will leave a link to the article in the description below. Do yourself a favor and give it a good read. With those details out of the way, let's not waste any time and dive right in. Grab you a cold drink, pull up a chair to the table, and let's talk about how sharks can regenerate. So, for starters, the article goes over what we do know about sharks and healing. It's a well-established fact that sharks' capacity to heal injuries is basically a superpower when compared to most other animals. I imagine a big piece of this is because shark pups have to survive in the ocean from the moment they're born by themselves. During this time, it's very likely that these babies will sustain a fair amount of injuries and trauma. In order for sharks as a whole to survive, they had to be able to have the ability to heal injuries fairly quickly. The article highlights that sharks receive both natural and unnatural injuries throughout their life. Natural injuries including mating events, especially for the females, attempted predation, and aggressive behaviors towards one another. On a side note, believe it or not, sharks rarely resort to violence when interacting with one another. There are numerous non-violent ways sharks sort things out and establish a pecking order. Once done, sharks are surprisingly well behaved when things are hashed out. Unnatural injuries include marine debris, vessel strikes, fishing, and even research studies. You know, when they drill those tracking devices into a shark's fin. That will come up later in this video. All of these injuries also have the added effect of sociological adjustments as well, meaning that sharks adjust their behavior because of these encounters. While scientists know sharks can heal wounds fairly quickly, outright regeneration is something we haven't had many opportunities to study. There are, however, a few notable examples the article highlights. A male lemon shark healed a 20 millimeter laceration on its second dorsal fin over the span of a year, to the point where it was almost indistinguishable. Juvenile white sharks have been documented healing some serious boat propeller injuries in just nine months. And sand tiger sharks have healed hook injuries in just six months. But when it comes to regeneration, there are two notable examples documented that caused scientists to look a little closer at this topic. One involved a whale shark missing the top of its fin. While the time period of the original injury is unknown, the shark was photographed five years later and the fin was completely healed, as in over 6% of fin tissue had grown back into its original shape, no less. That is pure insanity when you think about it. That's like you losing a whole finger and growing it back over the span of a few years. I told you sharks are the best animals in the world. No, stop coping, you're wrong. 
The other example is the main one this article focused on, involving a male silky shark. Silky sharks, or silkies as some people call them, are one of the most abundant species of sharks in Jupiter, Florida, where this study took place. While the article noted that one of, if not the biggest threat to silky sharks is fishing pressures, the injury this particular male had told a different story. These are two pictures of the injury on the shark's dorsal fin. As you can see, there's a level of precision to the cut, which implies tool use. The author of the article notes a lot of tagging going on in Florida, especially for silky sharks, and notices that the injury on the shark matches that of the equipment often used, that being the satellite tags. This particular male silky was photographed and ID'd in July of 2022 and wasn't seen for the rest of the year. In June of 2023, a silky shark with an oddly shaped fin was photographed again. They ID'd the shark and realized it was the shark that received the dorsal fin injury. And how was the fin, you ask? See for yourself. From July of 2022 to June of 2023, the male's fin area increased by approximately 10%. For context, the wound took up about 20% of the entire fin. This means that it healed over half of that in just a year. Going back to my finger example, if you lost your finger in 2022, it would be just over halfway grown back by 2023. They calculated that the regrowth rate was nearly 88% of its original size. This is amazing. I said it before, and I'll say it again and die on this hill. Sharks are the true tanks of the ocean. This does raise a few questions. Do regrowth rates or regeneration vary by species? They noted in the article that whale sharks apparently have an even faster regeneration rate. Do certain behaviors contribute to faster or slower growth rates? For example, do active hunters regenerate faster or slower than bottom feeders or other species of sharks with different specializations? And by how much? What is the extent that sharks can regrow body parts? Like, what if they lost their whole fin, or a big portion of their tail? The exciting part about all these questions is, scientists are only now just scratching the surface of this particular topic. What are your thoughts on the matter? Let me know in the comments below. This is going to be where we end today's video. Thank you for once again giving me some of your time, Remember to never skip leg day, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then.